Hey everybody, it's Patrick and Sarah from the Board Meeples, and today we're going to do a how to play of Agricola. Which is a game designed by Uwe Rosenberg and published by Lookout Games. As always, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more board game content. Thanks. Thank you. Agricola is a worker placement board game for one to four players. The object of the game is to take on the role of a farmer and gain the most points by having the most variety of development on your farmyard at the end of the game. Start by setting up the play area. The game board will go in the middle of the play area, then depending on the number of players in the game, check the bottom left corner of the double-sided game board extension and attach it to the game board. On the game board, you will place the action space cards. First sort them into six stacks based on the numbers written on the back of the cards. Then shuffle each stack individually and place them face down onto the game board. The cards with a 1 will go onto the stage 1 areas, cards with a 2 will go face down onto the stage 2 areas, and so on until the game board is filled with face down action cards. Now you'll place the supply board for the red major improvements near the game board. Place the matching red major improvement cards onto the supply board. There are also minor improvements, which are the orange cards. Shuffle and deal out a hand of seven cards to each player. There are also yellow cards called occupations. First, look at the square symbol on the left side of the occupation cards and return to the box the cards which have a number greater than the number of players in the game. After that, shuffle and deal a hand of seven occupations to each player. The remaining minor improvements and occupations are not used and will be returned to the game box. So now each player should have a total of 14 cards in their hand. In addition to cards, each player will receive 5 workers, 4 stables, and 15 fence pieces of one color. They will also take a farmyard board and place one worker in each of the wooden rooms on the board. The remaining colored pieces are the player's personal supply. The square, double-sided room and field tokens will be stacked in piles near the game board to form a supply along with the wooden resources, food tokens, and famine tokens. The three game board tiles, as well as these three suggestion markers, are used in variants to the base game, so just return them to the box. Randomly assign a first player and give them the first player token and two food. The other players will start with three food, and the game is now ready to begin. Agricola is played over 14 rounds, which consist of four phases each round. The phases are preparation, work, return home, and harvest. Let's quickly go through the phases of a round. Each round starts by flipping over a new action card on the board. If you get confused, just follow the stone arrows on the game board to determine which action card gets added each round. In addition to adding an action for your workers each round, You'll also need to add resources onto some of the spaces on the game board. These spaces are called accumulation spaces, which are depicted by the colored arrow. In each round, during the preparation phase, add the indicated number of resources into the space marked with the arrow, even if there are already resources present there. After the preparation phase comes the work phase. Starting with the first player, place exactly one worker onto an unoccupied space on the game board, and take the action listed, which could be taking resources on accumulation spaces, using cards, or expanding and building your farmyard board. The work phase will continue clockwise, with players taking actions with their workers until all workers have been placed. Once all workers have been placed, the game will move on to the return home phase, where players will return all of their workers back into the rooms of their farm board. Then some rounds, but not all, will end with a harvest phase, which is indicated by this symbol on the game board, which will be where you harvest goods on your farm, feed your family, and even breed animals in your farmyard. That was a basic overview of the phases in a round, but obviously Agricola is incredibly complex, and we should add some context into how you should prioritize your actions in order to accomplish the goals of the game. To do this, let's take a look at the scoring sheet on the game board. As you can see, the more of one thing you have on your farmyard, the more points it will give you, which does max out after a certain amount. First, we have fields, as well as fenced pastures, grains, as well as vegetables, and different types of animals. As you can see, if you have zero or very little of anything on your farm, you will lose points. This symbol means you lose points for having an empty space on the farmyard, 
You gain bonus points for fencing in a stable, renovating your house to be clay or stone, having more workers in your farmyard, as well as playing cards that gain points. At the start of the game, you will only have two workers, meaning that you'll only have two actions. So in order to take more actions each round, you'll want to build more rooms and then add workers when the action card becomes available. Remember to always make sure that you have enough food come harvest time as you expand your family or you risk losing points by having to beg for food. Some cards such as occupations or minor improvements can not only give you points, but they can make you a more efficient worker while taking certain actions in the game, which can really change the course of the game. To play cards, you will not only have to use a worker on the appropriate action space, but you'll have to meet any requirements that are listed on the top left of the card and pay any resources that are listed on the top right of the card as well. After playing the card, don't forget to use the bonus effects that are listed when taking certain actions during the game. Plowing fields gives you points and also allows you to later sow any number of those fields with grain or vegetables that you've gained into your supply. Grains or vegetables not only give you points as well, but they can be used as one food in a pinch, or cooked using major improvement cards that you build, such as a fireplace, to turn into more food tokens for your ever-expanding family. Fencing in pastures and building stables will not only give you points, but it allows you to accommodate animals on your farmyard for even more points. Without a fenced area or a stable, animals will wander away, so you must first collect wood, take the build fences or build stables action, and then collect animals from the action spaces. Each fenced pasture space can house exactly two of the same animal. Building a stable can then double the capacity of the entire pasture. So for example, this one by two fenced pasture holds two animals in each space, for four animals total of the same type. Building a stable here increases that capacity to eight. Then building a stable here increases that capacity again to now house 16 of the same type of animal. A stable outside of a fenced pasture can house exactly one animal and you're also allowed to keep exactly one animal in your house as a pet. Animals are unique in that they can breed and multiply every harvest, but they can also be cooked using major improvement cards for a ton of food for your workers. You can even cook them directly from an accumulation space before needing to house them if you don't have the space on your farmyard. The only exception to cooking animals is during the breeding phase. You're not allowed to cook parents or newborn animals during the harvest phase. During the harvests in the game, players will first take exactly one crop from each field and put it into their supply. Then feed every worker two food each. If there's a newborn worker who hasn't taken an action yet, you would feed them one food. Take one begging token worth minus three points for each missing food token per harvest. You can turn vegetables or animals into food if needed during this time. After feeding your family, you will then breed your animals. If there are two of the same type of animal on the farm, take exactly one newborn of that type, as long as it can be housed, and place it on the farm. Remember you're not allowed to cook this animal or the parents during this time. After the final harvest of round 14, the game ends, and players will use the score pads to tally up all their points using the chart on the game boards. Add or subtract points based on the chart for field tiles, fenced pastures, grains and vegetables in your supply and on the farmyard, sheep, wild boar, and cattle, then subtract points for any unused farm spaces, add points for each fenced stable, each clay or stone room, and each worker including the ones you start with. Now tally up any bonus points from cards, and the player with the most points wins. If there is a tie, then the player with the most building resources in their supply will be the winner. There are clarifications for all the rules, action spaces, as well as variants to the base game, and details for helping with scoring located in the appendix. So that's Agricola. It seems confusing, but you really learn how to develop a good strategy, and prioritize the different goals of the game just by simply playing the game. Let us know what you think or if we missed anything by commenting down below and please subscribe to see more videos like this. See you next time.